this is coming out on the same day that this video is published. The Falke by Landsknecht Emporium. So, here's my first look at it. I wasn't actually planning to add a new sword to my collection. In fact, right now I'm trying to get rid of as much as possible to downsize. Uh, this I've been eyeballing for quite a while. So when they asked me if I want to review one, I just, I couldn't say no. So here we are. I recorded a, an unboxing video. And then afterwards, as I shut off the video lights and set them aside and whatnot, I had a glorious moment of scatterbrainedness where I ripped the SD card out of the camera while it was still recording without shutting it off first. That was smart, so yeah, you can't really redo unboxings, you can't redo first impressions, so this is, I guess, a second impression. Still not a full review, so there's that. Anyway, enough of the blah blah. So this one, I picked this up at first, even more so then with the Albion Kriegsmesser, I was like, what, are you kidding? This has no weight. It feels like absolutely nothing. So this weighs, on my scale, 1.14 kilograms or two and a half pounds, which is crazy for the size. You know, that is amazingly light. It's got a gigantic cross guard, as you can see quite a large noggle as well and it's got a more strongly curved blade so if we compare them side by side you can see the knecht is a little straighter it has a longer blade and it stays wide for most of it it doesn't really taper a lot in profile this one here does taper in profile noticeably it becomes narrower toward the point here's a side by side comparison of the guard so the cross guard is longer on this and uh, it's overall larger. Before you get too excited, this is also a high-end sword in price. So it's not much more affordable than the Kinect. It is more affordable. Uh, the price is 1,100 euros within Europe because that includes the sales tax. And outside of Europe, it's 803 euros or 978 US dollars, 1,245 Canadian. So most likely you're gonna to have to pay import fees on top of that. So it's gonna be a little more, but that should still be well under the 1,700 US dollars that the Knecht cost. This is also made of 6150 spring steel, just like Albion swords. And the fit and finish is definitely comparable. Now I would say it's not quite exactly at the same level as Albion, but it's close looking at it. Landsknecht Emporium has an article on the website about the use of these, and they have some videos with HEMA practitioners who show it being used in one hand. And with this, I can absolutely see it. The Knecht can be used with one hand, but it's significantly more cumbersome because it's larger and heavier than this. Using this with one hand, not a problem at all. This is extremely light and agile, so there really is no struggle in that. It has a very long handle for single-handed use, but of course the Messer in general, with all its variations, typically has a handle that would allow for the use of two hands, now, even if it's overall smaller and in the manuscripts it's shown used with one hand. This here would definitely lend itself well to use as a long sword, but it's so light that you don't have to. So it's an ideal hand and half sword. I probably won't be able to test it and do cutting with it until spring, maybe even longer. Still looking for a better location now. But uh, what I'm definitely impressed by is the sharpness of the edge. If you do the old thumbnail test, if you don't know what that's all about, you put the edge on your thumb and then you push in the direction of the flat. So if it's dull, it'll just slide right off your nail. If it's sharp like this, it actually bites in and doesn't move. This and also just feeling it, with the fingers this is extremely sharp. The Albion Knecht came with a perfectly adequate edge for cutting, but this is substantially sharper, I have to say, which is really quite impressive. This should do a number on tatami mats. 
So definitely looking forward to that. Definitely seems well made. The guard has a nice tight fit. All the, the lines and the shape overall, very even, you know, professionally done. I don't see any irregularities. I mean, you always have to keep in mind that historical swords had a lot more irregularities than we generally expect nowadays. You know, sometimes one quillon would be you know, a little bit lower than the other. Uh, wavy lines here and there sometimes. This here seems up to high-end reproduction standards you know, compared to what else I've seen and handled. Uh, just one thing that's a little strange about this, that's the handle shape. So this handle is very wide and remarkably thin. If you look here, and that feels a little bit weird. It almost feels like holding onto just a tang. Not really, but it's, uh, it's certainly a different uh, dimension, different proportions than the Knecht. Now, I do find this less comfortable. I asked them about this and they said that when measuring originals, they didn't take into account how much width the leather adds. So they're gonna change that in future versions, so it should be narrower. Now, personally, I would like if the handle scales were also just a little thicker. Um, that would make it more comfortable. This is slightly awkward right now. I think if they make the handle scales a couple millimeters narrower, that'll definitely be better. But uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Either way, the leather wrap is done extremely well. It's a remarkably tight wrap, so it conforms perfectly to the shape. You can see how well it follows the, the channel here in the center of the grip. And what I like is that they sealed it properly. So this here is all pretty smooth. I mean, it gives you some grip, but it's not abrasive like some leather stitchings that I've seen. So this is properly done. This is not irritating on the hand at all. And I do like the grip. Um, it's just that the proportions are a little bit different from what I prefer. But if they change that, this is gonna be great. Now I've gotten into enough detail that it is almost a review, except without the testing. So I'm not gonna call it a review until I've really tried it out. The scabbard doesn't come with it, by the way. You have to order that separately. So that's another 320 euros with tax included. This is very well made too. Great fit. So I'll just hold this all down. There's minor movement down here, but overall pretty good fit. Now you can, shake it out pretty easily, but that doesn't really bother me. If you, if you were to carry it, it doesn't have to be extremely tight in there. And the nice thing is you can draw it very easily. So that is very well done. Also, it comes with, with two little knives, like utility slash uh, cutlery knives, basically. These are also very well made, tight tolerances, nice finish. So as I said, this video is gonna be timed to be published when this is available in the store. I'm gonna leave the link down below. You can also get a coupon code, which is SKULL50, that gives you 50 euros off the Falke for the first 10 buyers until the end of February. Uh, by the way, this is not sponsored. I mean, they sent this to me for free for review, but I didn't get paid, just to clarify. And uh, I don't get any kickback from it, so yeah. I definitely like it so far. Definitely impressive work and I'm looking forward to trying it out. I would also be interested in trying out a single-handed messer from Landsknecht Emporium eventually. And those are quite a bit more affordable. So that should be quite interesting as well. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes when I'll be able to get back to regular sword tests. Hope you found it useful, even though it was just a first impression or second impression or what have you. <laughs> so thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Using this with one hand, on the other hand, on the other, oh my goodness. Yes.